Yeah, James, it is the most hyped night in sports as it was opening night for the Super Bowl. So what we did tonight is we took this microphone, we stuck it in the faces of some Broncos players, and here's what we came up with. There's a new addition here at Coors Field. If you look at right center field, the fencing there, they made it much higher. Now, the reason being, as for you Rocky fans, when you've watched games here at Coors Field, there seems to be a jet stream out there, so they want to reduce the home runs that are hit here at Coors Field to help out the Rockies pitching staff. All right, guys. Hey, I've got some Broncos pup pooches here, and I guess they could do a trick, right? Yeah. Go Broncos! Go Broncos! Well, clearly this sports segment has gone to the dogs, which it usually does, right, per usual. Good evening, everybody. The Broncos hope they'll be able to wipe that smile off the face of Tom Brady on Sunday. It's the Brady Bunch, and the number one team in the AFC will try and bury the Broncos' playoff hopes. Colorado Springs resident Rick Barry is synonymous with the granny shot. Thanks to this unconventional shot, he made 90% of his free throws during his Hall of Fame career. Chinanu Anawaku of the Houston Rockets shot two free throws last night underhanded and made them both. I showed two of the players on the Air Force basketball team Anawaku's technique on my phone today and asked them if they would ever attempt a granny shot in a game. Would you shoot free throws like that? Oh, the granny shot. I, saw oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if all else fails and I'm like 0 oh, for mm -hmm. 10, you know, I might switch it up. Now, if you shot free throws like this, how much grief would you get? Oh, it, it'd be <laughs> crazy. You wouldn't do that, though? He swishes this one. No. To be an 85% shooter, you wouldn't shoot like that? Would it be 85%? Yeah, <laughs> I'd shoot like that. If you knew you could be an 87% free throw shooter, would you shoot like this guy? Oh, absolutely. It's no right doubt. Aside. Yeah, no question. How much grief would you get from people? I don't care. You wouldn't care? It's all about making shots, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I don't care. At the end of the day, you know. It's time for another serving of NAM and eggs. Sometimes I forget, are we living in 2016 or 1916 when I hear a comment like this? If I was a lady player, I'd go down every, every night on my knees, and thank God that the Roger Federer and the Rafa Nadal were born, because they've carried the sport. They ride on the coattails of the men. That yeah, that's Raymond Morris, the CEO of one of the most prestigious tennis venues in America, Indian Wells. What is he talking about riding the coattails of the men? Women's tennis is by far more entertaining to watch. In fact, it's sentiment like that that keeps tennis out of bounds in our country. Quick. Name the best American male tennis player. You can't. Now name the best American tennis player, period. That's easy. Serena. And that's all I have to say is Serena. And you know I'm talking about Serena Williams. If the relics of the tennis world didn't think like Mr. Moore, there would be more eyeballs in the great sport of tennis. We should celebrate tennis players like Serena and her sister Venus, not try and divide the men and women. Listen, tennis is not the WNBA or the LPGA Tour. It's true. Most fans prefer to watch men play basketball and golf. But that's not the case in tennis. It's too bad too many make a strong case for sexism instead of embracing both sexes in the world of tennis. We'll be right back. Gotta give it to the Nuggets tonight. They were down by as many as 29 points to the Brooklyn Nets late in the game. All they had to do was execute a simple inbounds pass and possibly tie the game. Nice catch, Holly. A fortuitous bounce for the Chiefs last night. My first question today to you, Broncos fans. Do you have any fingernails left? <laughs> that was a real nail biter last night. The question most Broncos fans are asking today, why? Good morning, everybody. Well, this shirt was nice to see on Sunday. A deep pass by the Denver Broncos. This is one of the reasons why Trevor Simeon was named the starter back in August. The kid can put that sideline pass mm -mm -mm, right on the money. It's another golden night for Team USA in Rio as the red, white, and blue struck gold multiple times now. I can't show you what happened tonight because the peacock would ask for one of my kids if I did. But I have the next best thing. It's time for another edition of Rob's Olympic Drawings. Mallory Pugh of Highlands Ranch became the youngest American soccer player to score in the Olympics. The 18-year-old put her left foot into this shot to give the U.S. the lead against Colombia. They would settle for a 2-2 draw today. Katie Ledecky, big toothy grin after she won gold once again this time. And the 200-meter freestyle, she has won gold twice already in Rio. And the GOAT, Michael Phelps, yep, 
He's number one as Phelps took gold in the 200 meter butterfly final. He also won his 21st gold medal later on in the night as he anchored the men's 4x200 meter freestyle relay. Amazing, and I apologize huh. to all those athletes and all their families for that depiction. <laughs> so lifelike, oh. though. I mean, it is. It it's it. like you're in Rio, really. <laughs> the yeah. IOC might be calling because a little, little too the good there. A little too. I'm getting a little too good at my uh, sketches. <laughs>